Yo guys, welcome back to another video. Today is going to be my first ever ghost client review and I'm very excited. We're going to be going over echo detectability, screen share methods, and the features that this ghost client has to offer. I will also be comparing it to its closest competitors and telling you guys if I think this client is worth it. If you guys enjoy this type of content, leave a like and press that subscribe button and leave a comment with questions or just tell me what you think. Now, as some of you guys already know from the thumbnail, this client that I'm going to be looking at today is called Entropy. And although I was sent this, it is not going to affect my review in any way. So let's just launch it up. Very clean UI, very fast injectability. Um, I like that a lot. First things first, I definitely have to admit that this is the most aesthetically pleasing external ghost client that I've ever seen. But before I show you guys the UI, I just wanted to say that I would be closely comparing Entropy with Whiteout and Vape Light because those are the other two massive ghost clients inside of this space. So right here is the UI, as you guys have seen, but I'm going to load a config real fast and it just loads instantly. And immediately you can tell that this client is very pretty anywhere from the tooltips that are super useful and actually explain to the really cool animations right here and the sick array list. Now the visuals actually do bring your FPS down quite a bit. As you guys can see, I was almost at 2K and now I'm only at like 300. But if I turn off the skeletons and the array list, my FPS does go all the way back up. You can see it just went up to 700 right there. And so this first module, Auto Clicker, really cool. They've opted to go with a single bar instead of a min and max like Vape Light, which I actually kind of like because if you have really good randomization, there's no real need to have a min or max. And this definitely is very good randomization. I've tested it on a lot of really good practice servers and it bypasses pretty much all of them. And you should be fine unless a server that you're on has a very hard CPS cap. But something that I thought was pretty cool is that if you have the auto clicker and then you just start clicking yourself, um, it'll actually disable the auto clicker so that you don't click on top and get like 30 CPS, which can easily get you banned from pretty much any server. And it also has a auto block kit, which I will show off pretty soon. Um, aim assist, very good. I'll turn this up to 15 so that you guys can see. Um, adaptive will actually aim towards the best spot on their hitbox. If I can demonstrate right here, I think I have swords only on. Yep. So this is um, the highest speed. As you guys can see, just goes straight for the, um, the hitbox corner, as you guys can see right here, um, right towards there to maximize your reach. But it's pretty smooth and not at all blatant, I would say, even at 15, which is pretty surprising. And it's got a really cool feature that I noticed and I have not seen anywhere else called sticky and it'll keep your aim on the first target that you start clicking on. So let's say that you're in a team fight or maybe you're playing Bedwars or honestly just any game where you've got a bunch of different people and you're all fighting them at once. So it'll focus on one player and just follow them. Now we have velocity right here, which is pretty standard except for a couple things. Of course, it's got kite where most ghost clients will, but um, it's horizontal and vertical can actually go up to 150, which is very cool if you're trying to do explosion jumping. TNT jumping and fireball jumping on Bedwars will be boosted by 0.5 if you have these turned all the way up. So I've kind of demonstrated that inside of my Nova Line video. And if you guys haven't seen that, go watch that. But explosion boosting is very, very, very cool and can be super useful. W tap, I've actually tested this out. I've never had a W tap module this good. And you guys will see that later when I hop on MMC. Reach pretty standard, nothing really here. You've got your range and hitboxes. Again, they've opted to go minimalistic, whereas you don't have a min and max range, which I actually kind of do miss to be completely honest. Refill, um, I'll test this out later. Last time I tried it, it didn't really work. So maybe I'm using it wrong, but I'm not really sure right now. Visuals, player ESP, I've already showed off the skeleton module but it also does have options for box. As you can see, this is pretty cool. And they also have cams, which I believe you need to have ignore depth on, which is pretty cool. And if I go behind this tree, you guys will see, uh, this is what the cams model looks like. I'm gonna turn off skeleton. So you can just see people through blocks. That's pretty cool, I would say. And then of course you have block ESP. Unfortunately, you can't actually add your own blocks. They only have this predetermined list and you can search to a max of 100 blocks. Uh, name tags, 
actually works surprisingly well, to be honest. Um, these name tags are pretty cool, I would say. And they, uh, they scale, of course, with how far or close you are. Um, and tracers, of course, works perfectly. You've actually got quite a bit of customization right here. You can do the thickness. Uh, you can change the color based on distance. And of course, you guys have already seen the array list, which actually has a decent amount of options for most ghost clients and doesn't look garbage like Whiteout does. The only downside with the array list is that it actually does significantly decrease your FPS. So if you're not trying to show people what you have on, I would personally suggest disabling it. Um, Bridge Assist, I will show you guys later. Um, Third Pot, pretty standard. anti bot pretty standard. They have a high pixel mode too, which works pretty well. I'll be showing off the Blink a little bit later. Um, it's got a pretty decent amount of features. Um, I'm gonna bind that to B for now. And it's got bi-directional and ongoing, which you can actually toggle yourself. The one thing that I'm not really a fan of right here is that when you press B, um, it's not pressed to hold. It actually uh, is like a toggle, but I think that the bar at the top, I've never seen that before to be completely honest, and it's super cool. All right, the next couple modes are bunny hop, timer, and sprint. The bunny hop actually works like really well, and you can actually turn this up like crazy. And of course it's got the omnidirectional. Um, if you turn it up, it actually does bypass and it's like crazy fast. Like I'm not even joking, this jaunt crazy. And then for mix, you've got your uh, general. I suggest definitely enabling these two because they look really cool. You have the watermark up here if you guys would like. And of course you've got a hide key. Uh, config right here, super easy to create configs. You can copy the ID and share the ID with your friends, um, or you can just save it. Uh, here's the load and delete keys, and then you've got friends right here. Now I'm actually gonna close the client right now and let's head over to their site. All right, over here we can view the prices of this client per monthly. It's $10 USD, same as Whiteout and Vape Lite. But actually if you're buying it for a lifetime, it's only $50 and you can pay with card or crypto. Um, whereas Vape Lite and Whiteout, I'm not actually sure if you can pay with crypto. I think you can through their resellers definitely, but um, it is $60, so this is $10 less. Alrighty, so I actually checked with Echo and I can't actually show you guys the scan, but I did talk to the owner of Entropy and he said, quote, it does not bypass Echo as of now. This is something that we are working on getting fixed and it's not really too surprising. Right now, only a couple of clients are bypassing Echo. Although Entropy overall is very good, it does have a couple of flaws and one really weird one is that it won't run if you have an invisible character in it. So I just put an invisible character and the thing just crashes. And if I remove it right here, gone, works perfectly fine. And that's pretty odd. But something even weirder is that it won't inject into solar tweaks, which I'm not quite sure why it comes up with an error message not create handle on Minecraft. If this bug is ever patched, and I very much hope it will be, I will make a comment and pin it. So if you're watching this sometime in the future, make sure to check the comments. All right, so I just hopped on Mindman Club. We're gonna be testing a few of the features in game and uh, just gonna be seeing how well it does. So you guys can see my settings from the, the top left. And I've also turned on keystrokes because I have W tap enabled and I'm not going to be block hitting or um, letting go of W for all of my fights you guys can see there that was just absolutely crazy and i'm also me testing out the blink uh this is the blink right now okay so i just enabled blink and it does not appear to be working let me try to fix that all right, so i just queued sumo i think i figured out what i was doing wrong and yep it does appear to be working now it's a little bit odd i have to uh i have to press b and then after that, I have to press another key that I bound to the bi-directional button. For me, that would be a uh, control. So I'm pressing B and then I'm holding control and uh, my blink's working. <laughs> so as you guys can see, that's kind of crazy. All right, now I also would like to test out the throw pot that I bound to um, tab. So if this guy could make me pot right now. <laughs> Yeah, as you guys can see, I'm kind of going crazy and I'm not letting go of W at all or block hitting. I'm literally just holding W and the client's doing the rest for it. Okay, so I still open tab when I do that. <laughs> Good to know. I'm gonna get down real low and then see if it'll throw up two pots. Okay, wow, it did. 
I only pressed tab once, um, as you guys could see, and uh, it potted twice. So that's very cool. All right, now I'm going to be testing out the bridging modules. Um, so I have bridge assist set to zero and right clicker to 20. So let's see how this goes. Okay, it looks like I'm bridging pretty well. What if I just press space? All right, looks like it's automatically shifting for me. Um, it's pretty conservative, to be honest. Uh, oh, I ran out of blocks. Whoopsies. <laughs> now, one of the few features that I feel that this client is lacking in is unfortunately a fast place. I really would love to see a fast place and they just currently don't really have one right now. Uh, I'm gonna show you how the diagonal bridging is right now. So this is what it would look like if you wanted to go diagonal. Now, in all honesty, I really do think that I can recommend this client to anybody who is just trying to get a decent ghost client for 50 bucks. And besides a couple twerks, like not being able to inject into solar or have like an invisible character, this client is an amazing blend between aesthetically pleasing, a great ghost client, and just honestly something with some really unique and crazy features and bypasses. Let me know what you guys think of this client down in the comments, especially if you guys own it. I'd be very interested in seeing your opinions. Anyway, this is it for today. Have a great and wonderful rest of your week and adios.